Moving Through Life, Part 10, Bittersweet Reunion. It had been so long since she had seen the insides of the walls. It was like nothing had changed. The smell of slightly aged wood still drifted in the air among the flecks of dust. There were still hooks near the entrance, which were natural precautions just in case they needed them. Shay had to think about the route they used to get home and, silently, began making her way through the walls. She paused at one of the main junctions to take a breath. Her heart was pounding so fast. Her lungs felt so tight. Every twisting nerve in her body brought her steps to a halt. She wanted her parents to see reason. She wanted them to understand that Todd was a good person, especially for a human. She wanted to show them all of the things they had made together that were still in Todd's backpack. Everything was coming to a head. Was she ready for it? Shay? The young borrower girl heard the familiar voice. She spun around, a lump forming in her throat as she looked into the faces of her three brothers. No words came to mind. Her mouth was dry, and everything she was just worried about vanished from her mind. She was home. Finally, she was home. Hey. She managed to choke out as warm, salty tears streaked down her cheeks. Um, I I'm home. Shay had barely uttered the words when all three of her brothers dropped their borrowing bags and charged at her, each throwing their arms around her and smothering her in an endless hug. Shay had let Todd hold her and had hugged his fingers dozens of times. But it was nothing like hugging someone her own size. The youngest of the borrower siblings didn't register her brother's questions, and she certainly dared not give any answers just yet. Not when this moment was so precious between them. They held one another for what felt like an hour, when everyone pulled away. Shay had never seen tears in her older siblings' eyes yet there was not a dry eye among them. Slate, the middle brother, was the first to sputter out a coherent question. How did you make it back? Where did you go? Where have you been? Slate sniffed and wiped his eyes on the back of his hand. We thought we lost you, Icon chimed in. Bo, with his knowing eyes, seemed to look through Shade directly to her thoughts. Shay, what happened? You've been gone for weeks. Just about two months, actually. How are you home? Shay felt her shoulders beginning to shake as she looked into her brother's eyes. She wanted to tell him everything. She felt compelled to tell him everything. Thankfully, Slate and Icon interrupted. Now is not the time, Bo. We need to get her back to Mom and Dad. They're going to be over the roof. With another keen look, Bo nodded and picked up his things as well as his sister's belongings. Alrighty then, let's go home. They made quick work of the passages and tunnels all the way back home. All the way, Shay tried grasping at any and every thought she could that would help her case. She finally had an argument in place. Now... All she could do was hope it would be enough. Mom! Dad! Come quick! shouted Icon as he sprinted up ahead and burst through the door into the kitchen. Bo rolled his eyes and followed behind Slate as he guided Shay along. On the other side of the wall, Shay could hear her parents' frantic calls. What is it? What's going on? Look! With that, Icon stepped off to the side, revealing Slate, then Bo, with little Shay tucked under his arm. Shay glanced from parent to parent, trying to read the situation. What she saw was confusion, before quickly evolving into overzealous cries and overjoyed sobs. 
Her father hobbled over as her mother dropped the spoon she was stirring with as they tackled their missing daughter. My baby, my darling, Shay, my love! They both cooed over and over as they gave her once over. Icon and Slate joined the fray, though Bo continued to eye Shay for several seconds just before he joined them all together as a family. Shay, smothered in kisses and hugs, finally felt like she was home. Still, there was something missing. Between the tears and sobs, unintelligible questions were thrown out, mostly in disbelief. Still, questions would need to be answered. However, that would have to wait. They had a lot to celebrate, and brought out some of their most rarely borrowed food and dishware for the occasion. The family, thankfully, ate in peace while they caught Shay up on everything they did to try and get her back, and what they were doing to get her back. All the while they were talking, Shay's mind drifted to what Todd was doing and if he was having the same kind of reunion. After they talked for what felt like hours, the family fell silent and turned to their long-missing daughter. Shay, I know it's still so soon, darling said her mother, leaning in and brushing the stray strands of hair from her face and over her ear. If you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to. I can only imagine. But we really want to know, interjected her father. How did you make it back? All eyes fell on the returned borrower. Shay didn't know how to start, but she started by easing into it. Well, I mean, Bo and Slate and Icon all saw me go into the box. We were just having a little fun, getting the last couple of things when there were footsteps. I managed to hide, but I couldn't get out in time. They tried, but to... The human came back before that could happen. Shay couldn't believe she'd almost already slipped up and hoped that no one noticed. So, I hid in the box and waited until everything was still again. It was a really long time, and I could hear them outside talking. After a while, they all left, and I managed to get out of the box. I kept to the corners, and I had my hook. Since they were gone, I just started exploring and trying to find a way into the walls. And that's when you found the other borrowers, interjected Bo. All eyes shifted from the youngest to their oldest sibling. What? She's been gone for two months. I know she's got the heart of a borrower, but this was the first time she was out. The eyes shifted back to Shay. Yeah, added Slate. What were they like? Were you able to help tell them about the humans' habits and stuff? Shay knew this was coming. She couldn't lie. She had tried when she was younger, and it went miserably for her. There was no way she could get away with it now. The thumping of her heart returned, and her gaze lowered. Well, not exactly. One look. That's all it took. One look, and they all knew. She was seen. Shay! hissed Icon and Slate. Her mother's eyes widened as her hands clasped over her mouth while her father looked like the wind had been knocked out of him from a harsh punch to the gut. Bo stiffened while her other two brothers stared in complete disbelief at her. No, it's not like that, she started to argue. We need to get everything ready. Her father was already on his feet and looking at the boys. Get the dried goods and the essentials only. No, please! Shay stood and clutched her father's arm. Shay, it's dangerous. You're lucky enough you weren't hurt, replied her father. Daddy, please, just listen to me. Just sit down, please, and let me explain. The oldest three slowed their rapid pace and stopped gathering as they listened to her. Shay retreated back to her seat, shoulders tense, as she tried gathering her scattered thoughts again. I, 
I, I was on my own. I was hurt, and I couldn't get into the walls. There was no other option. I could either sit out in the open and wait for no one to help me, to find me, or I could ask Todd for help. Shay felt her voice tightening and shaking, but she stood firm in her words. Shaken with the statement, her parents and brothers absorbed the information. Why didn't you try and find any other part of her, Shay? Asked her mother, emotion constricting her throat. There weren't any. The building is new. There were no lines or hooks or passages into the walls. N nothing. I, I did try. Shay wiped her eyes with the back of her hand. Oh, oh no, no, baby. I did. I didn't mean it like that cooed her mother as she pushed herself up and hugged her daughter tightly. It's just, humans are dangerous. At this, Shay slightly pulled away to look her family in the eyes. Todd is different, argued Shay as she held up her hands and pointed to the faint marks on her palms. He was the one who helped my hands when I got rope burns. He helped open a spot in the wall so I could go and feel safe. He let me eat his food and let me pick from time to time. He's the one who made sure I got home safe. The eyes of the family collectively widened. You mean, he knows where we live? Asked Slate. And we don't have a lot of time, interjected Bo. We need to start packing to immigrate. If he knows we're here, we don't have a moment to spare. No, he doesn't know where we live. And we don't have to immigrate, pleaded Shay. He's a good person. He's not going to tell anyone about us, not even his family. He promised to help keep the secret. I'm sure that's what he told you, muttered her father, looking unnerved and tired. But how do you know? He's with his family right now. How do we know he's not telling them about you and about us? How do we know they're not setting traps and preparing to open the floors and walls? We can't trust him. Any of them. I trust him. The room was quiet once again. Shay rubbed the pouring tears from her eyes constantly as the rest of the words spilled out of her. I was so scared, Mama. I was alone. And I tried to get up to the walls. I tried to stay hidden. He didn't even know I was there until I was injured. And even that was my fault, not his. He was so nice, and he helped me get better. He helped ma make things so I could stay hidden and left me alone when I wanted, and, and, and... The youngest borrower's sobs choked out the rest of her thoughts as she leaned once again into her mother's embrace. She let herself cry. She cried for the loneliness she felt when she was alone for the first time, and for every moment of unknown she endured. She finally was able to admit to herself that if the human were someone other than Todd, that things could have ended poorly for her. The danger she was in was astronomical on a good day, and with an unknown human it became mission impossible. She thanked her lucky stars it was Todd. After her eyes had dried, and only a few unsure hiccups remained, she looked back at her family. They were still tense and unsure, but there was a silent agreement that this was far too much excitement for one evening, and, for the moment, they hesitantly accepted they may be all right for one more night. The issue would need to be addressed again, and they would most likely need to immigrate but now it was time for resting and celebrating the return of their lost daughter. Shay lay awake in her bed for hours after the Christmas lights had gone out. It was her bed, fitting perfectly to the curves of the cloth and frame. It wasn't as comfortable as Todd's pillow she had borrowed for the past few months. The smell was the same as when she left it, the touch of peppermint. Shay buried her face into her covers and tried to sleep. 
Her usual tricks didn't work, and ultimately, she knew what was bothering her. She hadn't said goodnight to Todd. Regardless of what her parents said, there was no doubt in Shay's mind that Todd was still her friend, and would never do anything to hurt her or her family. The young borrower had enough tossing and turning. As quietly as she could, she slipped out of bed and put on her borrowing shoes. She slipped one of the bags over her shoulder instinctually, as well as her blanket fragment, and set out into the walls with her hip lantern. It took little to no time at all to reach the electrical cover and push it open. Shay listened instinctually, remembering all of her training like the back of her hand. No sound. She cracked open the socket and looked out. Yes, the light was still on. Shay quietly stepped out to the underside of the dresser and kept to the shadows so she could see the bed properly. Her heart leapt with joy as she saw Todd was in his bed with the light on, tapping on his phone. By the way he was laying down, he was getting ready to go to sleep. She checked to make sure no one else was around before walking out across the floor toward Todd. It was completely out of habit, but she didn't see the need to hide herself. She hadn't forgotten her skills, but she knew she didn't need them here. She shuffled her feet and pulled her blanket over her shoulders until she was only a few feet away from the edge of the bed. Todd, in the meantime, hadn't had a moment's peace since he arrived home. It was nice, in its own special way, but there was a peace in being in his apartment that couldn't be achieved at home. Still, it was great to be back. He heard about his siblings' classes and teachers as well as the woes of being young. His parents were keenly interested in whether he had met anyone new worth mentioning, to which he said no. There was, of course, Shay, but he wasn't going to bring her up. He had promised to keep a secret, and had worked so long to earn her trust. Besides, he liked having his shared secret with the handheld girl. He found himself distracted during conversation, thinking about his small friend and how she was faring with her family. Was she all right? She seemed pretty shaken about the whole circumstance. Was she afraid? Surely not. Then again, he remembered her fear when they first met. He could only imagine how a conversation with his parents would go if he confessed that he'd broken some very important rules and basically lived with a giant who wasn't supposed to know about him. It didn't go well. He hoped she was okay and that he'd get to talk to her again soon. They kept talking for hours until bedtime, where his siblings eventually went off to their rooms and fell asleep. He finally had a minute to breathe and to think in the quiet. The side lamp was on, and he just finished sending a couple of messages to his project members when he heard a very small and familiar sound. Shuffling. Todd dared himself to glance up and couldn't stop the smile spreading across his face when he saw his small companion standing only a few feet from the edge of his bed. A blanket of sorts was wrapped around her shoulders, and she practically had to bend backwards just to look up at him. She, too, had a smile on her face. Shay, hey. Todd kept his voice low so his siblings wouldn't overhear. He knew he was looming slightly but that couldn't be helped at the moment. He set his phone on the bedside table and readjusted himself on the bed so he was more comfortable. I didn't think I'd see you tonight. Everything okay? How's your family? The first thing Todd didn't want to do was bombard her with questions, but he couldn't help it. They all just spilled out of him. Shay giggled, muffling it with the edge of her blanket. She could see Todd was curious when he didn't mean to be. It was funny to her. The borrower teen thought about the questions for a moment, now feeling partially disheartened at the answers. It was no way to end a night, to be sad. 
The smile returned as she looked into her human friend's eyes. They're doing really good. <laughs> they were surprised to see me and tackled me when I came through the door, she said. Todd could already see that something was bugging her. It was a gut feeling, but it wasn't worth pressing just yet. He instinctually lowered his hand to the ground, and she climbed on in response without a second thought, leaning into the warmth and natural curl of his fingers. I'm glad to hear it. I'm sure they were worried sick about you, said Todd while carefully maneuvering his hand off of the ground and up onto the bed. I'm really going to miss this, said a small voice in the back of his head as Shay leaned into his fingers and began tracing the lines on his palm mindlessly. Yeah, they were really worried. They, well, anyway, what about your family? Asked Shay, obviously looking to redirect the focus onto something else. Happily, Todd obliged. Yeah, they were super happy to see me. It's weird being back, but it's not at the same time, if that makes any sense. Like, I'm glad to be home, but I'll also be okay when I go back. Does that make any sense? Asked Todd, to which Shay nodded. Yeah, that does make sense. She replied. I'm really glad they're happy you're back. The smile the borrower team gave was genuine, but that hint of sadness lingered in the corners of her lips. She obviously wanted to talk about it, but wasn't sure how to bring it up. Yeah, it's definitely nice being back. Um, Shay, what you were trying to say a second ago, asked Todd. Odd silence of the resting house crept through. Shay, do you, are you okay? Why was it that question, that one question, that always seemed to send everything tumbling out of place. Every thought and emotion could be kept at bay. However, after that question was asked, it was all over. Shay gave a noncommittal shrug before feeling the bottom of her lip quiver and her eyes start to burn again. Todd was definitely pulling on the right threads. They don't like that I know, do they? About you, I mean. The way he phrased it, do they, indicated he already knew the answer was a resounding no. Shay didn't want to cry anymore. There had already been enough tears for one day, but it didn't stop them from spilling over the rims of those exhausted eyes and down the already tear-streaked cheeks. She tried shaking her head, but that only made things worse. She sucked in a breath, which came in spurts and stutters. They don't want us to talk or see each other again, huh? He asked, which sent Shay into a sniffling spasm. She wanted nothing more than to stop the conversation, to go back with him or pretend that it never had happened. But it was happening. Todd, obviously disheartened, sighed and brought his other hand up, so he could use one of his fingers to brush her shoulder. Hey, it's okay, don't cry, he soothed. I, no, why, they're afraid, afraid, but if they, if they could just come and just meet you, they'd, they'd see, said Shay, as she tried to calm her breathing in between words so she could speak clearly. It was working, but just barely. Todd gave a soft, shushing sound as he rubbed her arm and back with his index finger. Yes, he was sad, heartbroken even. Still, he suspected something like this would probably happen, and secretly had been mentally preparing himself for it. He didn't want to leave his little friend behind, but taking her wasn't right either. She had a family and if they were going to trust him like Shay trusted him. He had to take a leap of faith and know that he had to do the hardest thing he'd done since moving out. He had to let her go and hope she would come back. 
Shay, started Todd, but he stopped himself. Telling her something like this now would ruin the reunion with her parents. He didn't want that for her. Not in a million years. Instead, he took a different approach. Look, I remember what it was like when we first met. You remember, right? Shay sniffled and nodded. Your parents probably thought they'd never see you again. They're relieved to have you back and are probably just shocked at hearing about us being friends, yeah? It's a lot to take in for one day, encouraged Todd. The engineering student could see his building argument taking root in Shay's head. It was already comforting her. We have time, I guess, is what I'm saying. Give them some time to enjoy the fact that they have you back safe and sound before doing anything too crazy. <laughs> Let's face it, I don't think I'm ready to meet your parents. They sound intimidating, finished Todd with a smile. At this, Shay actually managed a small laugh. At the very least, let's let them sleep on it. It's been a long day, so let's get some rest, yeah? Shay nodded and pulled her blanket closer to her chin. She didn't want to admit it, but she was starting to feel drowsy, already feeling the warmth of Todd's hand and feeling the gentle pulse in his fingertips. Yeah, she mumbled sleepily. Don, can I stay here with you, please? Todd had to think about the question quickly. He wanted nothing more than for Shay to stay. But he had his siblings to think about, and the last thing he wanted to do was get her in trouble, giving her parents even less reason to trust him. I don't know if that's such a good idea, Shay, said Todd unsurely. I could walk you closer to home, so you don't have to walk as far. Shay was saddened by this. But she understood enough. At any rate, the offer was tempting, and she decided to accept. Todd tiptoed his way through the house to a piece of trim that had been loose for years, and set Shay onto the ground after she hugged him and thanked him so much for all he had done. Todd watched the bar routine slip into the walls and waited to make sure everything was okay before heading back to his room. Shay slipped back under her covers and began dozing off immediately. Todd was right. Her parents just needed time, and needed to see that Todd was a good person, a good human. Letting the fading warmth of his hand soak into her bed, she silently vowed she would do whatever it took to make her parents see Todd the way she did. <laughs>